Okay. This is a little interesting. So, um, apologies, everybody. I've, uh, you know, uh, there was a recent update to OBS, so I'm just kind of making sure that everything is working correctly. Uh, welcome to another 1 p.m. PST YouTube stream. I'm your host, Transfer Jim, and today we're going to be getting into some PEGA certification study. We got some Unreal studying after that, or the uh, Unreal tutorials. Uh, we got some more videos to upload, or you know, make put them on the schedule for to be released. And then, of course, uh, we got some Terraria later on tonight, uh, both the single player and the multiplayer. So, um, so yeah, we got we got those uh, coming up. Um, what's kind of interesting right at this moment in time is that normally I would see like more in terms of the audio mixer, but it doesn't really have that much when I go live this time around. So that's interesting. Not quite sure exactly what happened there, but eh, whatever. We move on. Um, okay, so in terms of uh, PEG Academy. Um, well, for those of you that are coming into the stream uh, for the first time, or, you know, um, if you're a returner, thank you, welcome. Um, if you're watching this later on YouTube, um, I wanna thank you for uh, joining me on these videos. Hopefully you find them for, uh, informative and continue to um, watch that particular content. Um, I have multiple playlists if you're interested. So, um, okay. So let's get into the nitty gritty, shall we? Uh, who am I and why am I doing these videos? So, uh, I am currently a out of work software developer, um, whose last job was a contractor for the pig environment. Um, when I was hired on, uh, we were put into training, uh, for the PEGA certification, um, with, with an authorized training partner trying to teach us all about it. However, uh, myself and my peers were really not that impressed with, uh, our teacher. We were having some... Uh, a fair amount of difficulties with the individual and um, and you know it wasn't it wasn't just us that saw it you know uh, even the person's co-workers were having some difficulty um, but um, you know we asked you know a couple of us asked to be put back into the training routine so that we could you know get a good teaching uh with another uh, with a different authorized training partner so that we could take the certification with um with confidence and pass it um but they didn't do that uh the time that you know uh, they basically forced me to take the certification and I knew that I wasn't ready. I was already in full self-study by that point and I had yet to cover all the information necessary to pass the certification and I clearly failed it. If I had done like six more questions right, I might have, I might have passed. I might not have, you know, I might have gotten that certification and who knows, I might have, I might still have a job. You know, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, um, uh, circumstances was not on my day, uh, was not with me on that day. But at the same time, um, you know, I didn't really like the idea of one, being forced into taking the certification to begin with, and two, um, you know, uh, aiming for the bare minimum isn't exactly something that I want to do either. Um, you know, try for, try as much as you can to get to that 100%, but obviously there's, there's moments where even I myself, 
um, you know, I'm, I was never an A student. I could never memorize everything in my brain to, um, to get through all the tests and quizzes and homework and stuff like that, you know, with ease. Um, so, um, and, you know, I, I, I did what I could to, to try to resolve that at, at times, but it was never enough. Um, but, um, now the, the, the blame afterwards falls on me. Okay. I should have continued with the self-study. I should have tried another time to, or, you know, I should have gotten to the point of like being very confident with Pega and try it again. Uh, but I did not do that. Um, I, I work well when I have someone that I could, um, you know, uh, discuss things like right then and there about the subject material and try to learn right then and there about, you know, what it's actually talking about. Um, you know, um, when they put me into a contract after the training that was done, um, I was kind of hoping for more of a mentor to kind of help me do that, get through uh, the self-study to attempt the certification again and uh, pass it, but that never happened either. Um, the individuals that I worked with were more um, hands-off than anything else. They wanted, you know, they obviously they wanted me to continue working towards that certification, but at the same time, they were more inclined with, um, we'll answer questions, but we won't necessarily join you for any of the study sessions, which I mean, on one hand, it makes sense because I mean, you know, why should, uh, someone who passed the test, you know, put their time towards helping others that have not. Um, but here's, here's the thing, you know, I've, I'm already finding problems with the, you know, I've, I've found a lot of problems with the, uh, Pega Academy's topics, the fact that they don't cover them, uh, relatively well enough, in my opinion, um, kind of shows that, you know, um, it, it, it's, it's in my opinion that you should really have someone there along with the student, um, helping that student learn through Pega Academy well. Now, they do have an instructor led training, but know that I am not an authorized training partner and this is not meant for an instructor led training. Don't think of me as such. Um, I'm, I'm learning Pega just as much as anybody else trying to get their certification. So, um, I will try to answer questions if any questions are posted. Um, and if I don't have the answer, then I will ask my previous coworkers to step in and answer said questions. Okay. So, um, so, you know, feel free to ask those questions, you know, whether it's right now in chat on the stream or um, through my YouTube videos, okay? Don't feel like you are alone in this. If you are not understanding something, feel free to ask those questions. Because at the end of the day, we're all working towards getting our certifications, whether it's system architect or business architect at this point. Uh, and that's all I'm covering with these videos so far. Okay. I'm not moving on to anything else beyond that. My main goal right now is to get the system architect certification. If you want to, if you're working towards the business architect, well, you're kind of on the wrong video. Um, or you came into these streams a little too late. I've already covered the business architect. I covered these two, two missions and the two modules. Now, um, I will 
you know, or, you know, feel free to check out the playlist of all the topics and challenges that I've already covered for the business architect. If that's, if that's something that you are interested in, um, but know that these two modules here are all about the Peg Express delivery. And I feel like these two modules do not cover enough for the Peg Express delivery. Peg Express delivery is 12% of your grade on the certification, you know, according, according to them. Okay. So you better know what Peg Express delivery is all about, you know, forwards and backwards. Uh, or you're going to be having a top score of 88%. That's still passing, but not exactly uh, something to aim for. So now know that I'm working on the 8.7. Um, they have not translated 8.8 .8 and they just got started on the 23. So, um, I'm doing the 8.7 because it is translated and if anybody's watching me right now in one of these other languages then you know maybe they can follow along so but all right let's uh let's get into the system architect and uh, move on to the next topic or actually in this particular case, that's the challenge for grouping fields and views. So, um, so they say that it's going to be 15 minutes, three tasks. So right now, uh, there is a challenge walkthrough, which is apparently two minutes and 15 seconds in length, which is interesting, but, um, I'm not going to be using this. Okay. I only use this if there's something in the detailed task that is not uh, informative enough as to, you know, what steps they took to get from point A to point C. If they skipped step B, you know, then I will check out the challenge walkthrough if that's the case. Um, but more often than not, I don't use it at all. So. Okay, scenario. Uh, based on feedback, Google Roads customers are unable to double check details before submitting an assistance request, leading to confusion and additional time spent correcting details. The Google Road management team has decided to implement a final read only confirmation screen after customers enter all the relevant information. This confirmation screen presents all the information to the customer before allowing them to submit their assistance request. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the password ready. And we just have to wait for the instance to um, to finish being created there. So Now we just have to be patient. So, author, password, login. All right, now, 
so we're going to assistance request and we're going to be going to the collect information oh we're going to be adding the collect information um well this is interesting because there's already a collect information step already there see enter customer information enter location enter vehicles so it's like hmm um, and the enter payment information process click step and click information payment information all right so down here huh all right Okay, rename the step review assistance request. Okay. In the properties pane, click configure view to open the form editor. In the left pane, click Views to see the list of views. From the list of views, hover over Enter Customer Information. And I'm assuming Add. Yeah. Then click the Add icon to add the existing view to the Review Assistance Request step. Repeat step six to add the identify location, identify vehicle, and enter payment information views. Okay. There we go. In the options list, select read only for all the views added. Click submit and then click save. Okay, so we're changing all these to read only. Click submit. And click save. Okay. Right. So now we create a new assistance request case. Advance the case to enter customer information uh, step. So. Okay, here we are in the enter customer information step. Um, select the account ID for a user with the standard cover uh, standard coverage level. Select an user with gold coverage does not display the enter payment information view during the case processing. So, you know, they selected H. Thomas, so, so we can do the same. So. 
H. Thomas, standard. There you go. You move on. Uh, advanced case to the review assistance request view. So, or review assistance request. Yeah. Okay, so. Doesn't matter on these. Although it probably would have been good if I actually put down some additional information there, but if the view name does not display, you can verify where you are in the case lifecycle by clicking on the stage header. Go over this section and click the configure this view icon. Come on. There we go. Uh, in the right pane, click Change to change the template. In the, in the Select the Template window is displayed. In the Select the Template window, click Mobile Page with Content and Layout Group. Okay, so uh, we're going to do Change. Okay, I'm getting an error all of a sudden. Okay, that's weird. Um, okay. Now the window just popped up and said, you know, hey, you know, you've encountered an error. And it looks like everything's been frozen. So I guess I'll just go ahead and close that down then. Uh, not sure what happened there, but. Okay, this is still there, so we're going to do the save and run. Okay, let's do, let's add a little bit more information in here, you know. So, one, two, three, all along all, all, street. Um, Adamsville and then we'll do New York and then we'll put in the one two three four five uh, we're doing uh, we're driving a Subaru Fu uh, with the color red and the model year is 2024 let's see if that that works yeah, apparently all right, we're going to use the MasterCard with our card number of 1234567891 because, I mean, why not, right? Um, the expiration date is definitely from before, so that should fail. Yeah. There we go. All right, so here's all of our information being saved and stuff like that so um
Hmm. Um, we're having some issues with this there, folks. Not sure what's going on here, but... Um... Okay, um... I don't know what's going on here. Um, we seem to have a slight problem with the with you know the view somehow maybe we do it this way Set the template window, click mode page with content and layout group. Mode page with content and layout group template can be used to implement the view. So layout group from App Studio. Drag and drop all the sessions to the B section. Oh, I mean, there's there's no items in A to begin with either, so. so hmm. Maybe this is what was needed. Yeah, probably. Okay, and now they wanted me to drag everything down to to the B section. Okay, so there's that. Um, okay, so everything is now tabbed. So there's that. Uh, change the section labels. In the B group tab section, click the edit icon for the enter customer information section. Okay, so. In the right pane, click Settings. Okay, Settings, got it. In the Container se se uh, Settings section, in the Title field, enter Customer Information. Okay. Go. Click apply and then click close. Okay. Apply and then close. Okay. Repeat steps one through four to change the labels for the remaining sections. Well, here's the problem. 
the um, when you selected the you know the customer information section it you know it focused on that so um, so I need to add a little bit of a change on this here So, the problem with task two, steps four and five, at least I believe that's the, those were the correct steps here. Let me, let me verify that real quick before I uh, go too far here. Take a look at the picture again. Yep, yeah, four and five, okay. Um, is that when you select the customer information section? Um, um, The panel on the right is no longer showing all four sections. It focused on the customer information section. Now I know what I need to do to get back to the other three sections to finish off task two, but you might want to include steps just in case they aren't familiar with what is needed to get back without causing additional um, There we go. Suggestion submitted. So it's like, yeah, sure, you know, this is this is all well and good, but you're not actually telling them how to go like, hey, you know, we we just finished off this. You might want to go right back up to the review assistance quest so that you can see all the information here. So, and
one by one. And last one. There we go. And now you can kind of see, like, you know, the different information that is being displayed at the very top there. So service address, service address, vehicle information, vehicle information, payment information, payment information, and then, of course, customer information, customer information. So we're all good there. And the review assistance request screen click any tab to display the customer service address vehicle and payment information confirm that the information is read only so um Uh, they didn't really go through the step on like, you know, how to like exit the panel, but yeah. All right. So customer information, you know, obviously you can't change anything here. Same with service address. You can't change anything. Vehicle information can't change anything. And payment information can't change anything, so so that's what they uh, mean by read only there. So okay, so that's it. That's where we're gonna go ahead and end our challenge. Once again, I really wish that they still had the uh, testing um, on on these uh, later challenges. It's just kind of unfortunate that they don't, but not much, not much I can really do about it now. So, you know, um, uh, if I knew more about how to, um, you know, about how to, you know, make tests of, you know, myself, then I might. And I might have, like, you know, stepped in and tried to do it for them. But to be honest, I don't have enough up here to to make that step, you know, to do those steps to necessary, you know, get the, you know, make sure that the information that I'm providing is indeed correct. So, so I mean, you know, hey, sure. I can say that this is complete, but, you know, uh, I mean, I could have done, I could have clicked that at the very beginning of the challenge and they would have been, yeah, sure, no problem. You, you know, you completed it. Yeah, you got it. Like, for example, um, um, here, let me, let me kind of take, take an example here. Uh, we have displaying list data and views here, right? Now that's the next challenge. I can come right on down here and mark it as complete. Now, I haven't touched this at all. I mean, I haven't even gotten the instance of this at all. So one would think that if I haven't even started the instance, they'd look at this and go, are you sure? You know, by marking the challenge as complete, you're confirming that you successfully completed all the required tasks. Once you confirm your status of the challenge cannot be changed. So, 
um, just to show you what it's all about. You know, I will go through this challenge again, you know, uh, soon, but. I haven't touched this at all. I haven't even created the, I haven't even made an instance of it yet. So, and unfortunately, when you look at the information here, it's showing the fact that we have the, we haven't even gone to the module for displaying list data and views, much less, you know, gone through the full on challenge. So, um, so obviously that's, that's a problem. Um, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be doing that or, you know, I shouldn't have, you know, they shouldn't give me that kind of power, you know, they should be testing it. This goes to leads and managers and, and you know, of anybody of high, you know, you know, if you're, if you're leading a team, you should still review the code that your team is producing so that you know, it's, uh, it's up to your standards, you know, for the company, because, um, let's face it, um, you know, I've, you know, as I've stated, you know, in the past before I've gone on, you know, I went to this one company, they told me to learn, you know, a language for the first time. Uh, I then used that language to review um, previous work done for our client on that. And I found the fact that, you know, one particular programmer, don't know who, it was never stated as to who made the change or anything on those lines. So I can't necessarily go up to that person and say, what the hell did you do? Um, nor did they really have any... Um, and I don't even remember if they really had any kind of version control, so I couldn't even look up, you know, who submitted the code to begin with, right? Um, but I was looking at them, like, going, uh, you know, you submitted code that allowed for anybody to get into their, um, into their web page, you know, provide a f false email address provide a false uh password and you were still able to get into their uh to their website and i was like oh, this is not and this is not good you know i don't know who 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 put in that change but you know uh this is um you know this needs to be corrected like now you know um but, um, you know, and of course I did that work for free because, um, there's no way in hell that I was going to go to a client and say, Hey client, um, you're allowing anybody to log into your system right at this moment in time. Who are they going to blame? They're going to blame us, the, the, the creators of said system. <laughs> You know, so, um, you know, I informed my boss about it, that I found it, but that was about it. Or at least, if I remember correctly. It's been several years since I did that, so. Um, but still, it's it's one of those things where it's like, you know, come on, you know, this is, this is, this should be standard, you know, testing. You know, making sure that you're you're working on it properly. Um, I hope whoever they put in charge of continuing that, you know, does a good job. Uh, no longer no longer matters to me. So, but that's it. That's where 
uh, the stream is going to come to an end. Um, we'll have to um, tackle the display and list data and views next time. Well, we got to go through the this particular module first before we move on to the challenge. And I'll need to remind myself that uh, the next day I'm, I'm going to need to do this challenge without, um, you know, and you know, go through the necessary steps. Maybe tomorrow I'll be able to get through, you know, not only the the topic, the the module quiz, you know, maybe I'll be able to get to the challenge as well. It's hard to say, but um, we'll, we'll go from there um, when the time comes. But uh, that's going to be it for our uh, Pega stream. We're going to be moving on to Unreal Engine here in just a minute. So um, stay right there if you're if you're watching this live on stream, uh, you, if you're watching this on video on YouTube, um, help me out with the YouTube algorithm. That would be fantastic. You're welcome to go check out the other playlists, uh, such as the Unreal tutorials, um, and check those out if you want. Or check out the, my other gaming playlists if you're interested in that. Uh, but that's going to be it for uh, today's Pega stream. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. We'll look at you next time. Until then, take care. Have a good night. Stay healthy, stay safe. And I'll catch you next time.